In the book of Jeremiah, drought is experienced by a people who were unfaithful to God. They gather in Jerusalem to acknowledge their sins and ask the Lord to show compassion and end the drought. In today's gospel, Jesus leaves an unbelieving crowd and gathers his apostles to explain to them the meaning of the parable of the wheat and the weeds. He tells them that he is the sower of the word of God, those who listen and obey are the children of the kingdom, and those who do not are the children of the devil. God allows good and evil to coexist until harvest on Judgment Day. Those who remain righteous will go to heaven, and those who sin and cause others to sin will go to hell. We oftentimes are fearful of a God who is powerful and vengeful. We see Him in the Old Testament venting anger on people who disobey their covenant with Him. But in the book of Jeremiah, God shows His tender side as He weeps in seeing His people sick with hunger and killed by the sword. Hungry and desolate, they plead for His compassion. We often judge God wrongly. We see Him as cold and uncaring, indifferent to our sufferings. This story happened on the outskirts of the city of Juneau, Alaska, USA, in 2003, when the famous photographer Nick Jens and his dog were shooting near a frozen lake. At one point, Nick noticed the silhouette of a black wolf standing at the edge of the lake and watching him intently. The man moved slowly away, worried that the wolf might attack his dog. But suddenly, his dog raced off and ran towards the wolf. Nick tried to call his dog back, but it kept getting closer to the wild animal. The owner was terrified. He was expecting a fight. But what happened next was a great surprise, even for an experienced photographer. The dog and the wolf started to play. Nick calmed down and quickly pointed the camera at the animals. Soon the wolf ran into the forest. It continued showing itself between the trees, inviting its new friend to play. Since then, the lonely wolf has often been seen on the outskirts of the city. Nick was able to take photos of its graceful silhouette many times. The wolf was getting closer and closer to the houses. The photographer named it Romeo. However, the locals weren't happy about the appearance of the lonely wolf on the outskirts of the city. They were afraid that the animal would attack dogs or even children. But Romeo continued to get closer to the people, and soon they were no longer afraid of its presence. It certainly didn't intend to attack people. It seemed that the wolf, which was separated from the pack for some reason, just wanted to communicate. Soon, many Juno residents also wanted to communicate with the friendly predator. Together with their pets, they often visited Romeo in his favorite place, the Mandenhoglazier Park. People brought their pets with them, and Romeo was very happy to make new friends. The wolf started to imitate dogs, and sometimes even played with people. But there were also some people who hated Romeo. According to them, a wild animal is always a threat, so they wished that the wolf would disappear as soon as possible. For six years, Romeo had been an unofficial symbol of the city, a favorite of the residents, and a source of inspiration for photographers. When the wolf's lonely silhouette stopped appearing at the lake, people realized with sadness that Romeo had left this world. People decided that Romeo deserved to be remembered. Now a memorial plaque meets people at the lake, reminding them of an unusual and friendly animal that became an inspiration for the whole city. If you liked the video, click like and share this extraordinary story with your friends. Oh, and also don't hurt the animals and subscribe to our channel. See you next time! Our obedience to God's commandments is prompted by our fear of going to hell if we do not. The avoidance of sin should not be out of fear, but out of love for God. We need to realize that He is a compassionate Father who weeps when we go astray. He desires for us to come back to Him and be restored. He will be more than happy for us to seek His help when we get lost. But we should not expect Him to respond in the manner we want Him to. He will help us in the best possible manner that will fulfill His will for us. Our faithfulness is what He desires. Our trust is what we give to Him. That trust is our impetus to follow Him more. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge my sinfulness and desire Your compassion. I have become too focused on myself and have forgotten Your presence in my life. Hold me and guide me throughout my life so that I may not get lost again. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. Amen.
name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.